Andrew Vaccaro writes from Down Under, says, Mark, thank you for continuing to remind listeners around the world of what's happening here in Melbourne and throughout Victoria. In my 40 years, I never thought I would see what is happening to my great city. Curfews now dropped. Uh, they, they were sort of gradually ameliorated. Five-kilometre travel limits, that means you can... You, can't, you can basically go within three miles of your home. Mandated masks. Two hours of exercise permitted a day. Be grateful, Andrew. Uh, your local dictator basically doubled the amount of time you're allowed to leave the uh, house for because uh, it was only an hour till uh, a couple of days ago. Uh, police with powers to issue fines and detain people at will. Continued state of emergency. Half our shopping centres closed. Churches closed, etc. At the centre of all this is our Premier, Daniel Andrews, who is not only the worst leader in Australia's history, is now on par to achieving the status as one of Australia's worst human beings with this continual, cruel and unnecessary extension of these lockdowns, which are now three months in from an original six weeks. Andrews is an unabashed socialist, totally at the bidding of the Chinese Communist Party. Uh, he was actually about to sign Victoria over to China's Belt and Road Initiative before the federal government stepped in. What is worse is that at the moment he is facing increased scrutiny over mishandling of our hotel quarantine program, where he utilised untrained security guards to maintain isolation of infected people rather than the army, which drove the major second wave that Melbourne saw, leading to the death of over 800 people, mainly in aged care, much like what happened in New York. I've never despaired as much as I am now. That's right. This actually, just, just on that specific point, Andrew, this business, people say, well, you know, when bad things happen, people trust in government more, that uh, when, you, when something novel and unknown hits, uh, you look to your government uh, more than you might in times of normality. Well, if you do more fool you, um, basically the people who were m most entrusted to the care of the relevant authorities were the people in the care of those uh, heavily, supposedly heavily regulated old folks' homes I forget what they're called. You can't say old folks' homes anymore, but whatever the stupid euphemism for it is, um, were the ones who were most vulnerable uh, and the ones we should thus have protected the most. Instead, we killed them all because we said, oh, you haven't, you haven't got any COVID in your old folks' home, so let's put some uh, people in there with you. And uh, you have situations uh, like in, in the United Kingdom. 40% of the deaths in the UK are people who died in those old folks' homes. In normal circumstances, that would be enough to end my dear friend Boris's term as Prime Minister because he bungled the whole bloody thing. If, if, if the most... If, COVID is this stupid thing where we're regulating the lives of perfectly healthy 22-year-olds uh, to protect octogenarians and nonagenarians. Uh, but it doesn't make any difference because people like Andrew Cuomo kill off all the octogenarians and nonagenarians anyway. Uh, Andrew, Andrew says, what I wanted to ask you, Mark, is why do you think so many people within a society accept this taking of our freedoms and do not see how bad a leader someone like Daniel Andrews is. Unbelievably, even with his descent into dictatorship, his and his government's complete incompetence, his selling out to China, he still probably has the support of close to half the Victorian public. Though recently I've seen more and more people in my day-to-day -day life fed up with him. Why do you think it had to get this bad for all these people to see what we saw from the start? And why do you think they are so deferential to government in spite of all the incompetence and tyranny? I think this is a great question, actually, because what would be dangerous? You can have a lot of bad indicators about a society. You can have high inflation uh, or you can have poor education results. But there's something more fundamental 
It's a little bit in After America about this. When, when a people lose the habits of liberty, when they lose the habits of liberty, that is thinking as a free person, that is thinking on the basic common law proposition that unless something is expressly forbidden, it's permitted. In other words, that it, the onus is on the government uh, to justify uh, that small number of things it forbids. Once you uh, forget that and once you get into the habit of the situation in Victoria and many other parts of the world now, where basically whether you can leave the house, whether you can go and have a meal uh, inside in a restaurant, whether you can go and open your business, is now in the gift of the state. On and on and on. That does get very close to a people that have lost the habits of liberty, and there are not a lot of easy ways back from that.